Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Bill, aka STL Puckhead. This is my first ever video on YouTube, so I wanted to give you a little introduction and a little background, um, kind of what I collect and, and how I found myself on YouTube. So, um, I'm a lifelong collector, primarily baseball cards. I've gone through spur spurts where I've collected a whole lot of hockey, um, but I always end up working my way back to baseball somehow. Um, but I started collecting in the early to mid 80s, got really uh, heavy into it probably around 87 through 93, 94, somewhere around there, and then gradually tailed off. Um, but I would, I would always, at least a couple times a year, um, bust open a blaster box, go through it, pull some cards out, um, and then stick the rest of them back in the closet and uh, never really mess with them. I wasn't an active collector um, for a few years. But I started to get back into it around 2007 or 8. I was in Colorado and there was a small card shop there in Colorado Springs um, that I found one day and I, and I would spend a lot of time in there pretty much every week. Um, but I did mostly hockey then. Um, but ba basically the entire time I've been collecting, I've been an accumulator and not a collector. So here recently, um, you know, 2018, 2019, you could, it was starting to get where you could find the modern stuff just about anywhere. And I was wondering if this was the smartest way I could spend my hobby dollars. So in order for me to focus on building a collection and shift away from that accumulation mentality, I decided I was gonna start building a, a 1960 top set. And there's more of a background to this that I'll, I'll cover in future videos. But this 60 top set, I just, I thought those cards are amazing. So for me, it was kind of a mental trigger to quit spending all my money blasting or busting blaster boxes and the hanger boxes at Walmart and shift focus into more cards that I want that mean something to me that I think are going to hold value um, hopefully over the long term. But I'm, I'm not an investor. I'm a collector. And, and these are grail cards to me that I never thought I'd ever be able to afford when I was a kid. I still do some of the modern stuff, more modern uh, Hall of Famer type guys, rookie cards. I, I still like uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Kyle Tucker, some of the newer guys. So I still have some of the newer rookie cards, but those aren't actively what I'm looking for. And I'm not ripping any of the modern product really. So what my channel, what you'll see most on my channel is baseball cards um, from the 90s, back to the vintage era. I love to rip junk wax boxes. I've got stacks of junk wax cards sitting back here that I have to get enough penny sleeves and top loaders to put them away. And some of these cards aren't worth the penny sleeves and top, holder, top loaders that I'm putting them in, um, but that's okay with me. They're nostalgic. That's what I grew up collecting. That's what I love as well as the vintage cards. And so I just, I love sports. I love cards, I love collecting. I also do hockey and football uh, and basketball. Um, I would like to grow and, and expand those collections as well. Um, I, I don't have a lot of um, those sports. So I'd like, to, I'd like to get more into that too. But I have to spread my, I have to be very deliberate with my hobby dollars. I collect on a roughly $200 a month budget. So how do I work, how do I collect a, build a complete set of 1960 tops on a, on a $200 budget? And I like to build my set in SGC and PSA mid-grade cards of all the Hall of Famers and, and stars. Um, fives and sixes, because I'm buying most of these cards off of eBay. So if I buy a card off of eBay and it's a well-centered card in a five or six, I have a pretty good idea of what kind of condition that card's going to show up in. So that's just what I'm, I'm comfortable with um, 
in that era of cards is the five or six range. And that also allows me to drop it down closer to where I can afford it in my budget. And I'll talk a lot about what I do in my collection on a $200 budget. Now, for some of you out there, $200 is a drop in the bucket. Uh, but for me, that's a lot of money and it's, it's money I never thought I'd be able to spend as a kid per month on baseball cards. $200 back then may as well have been a million dollars. For some of you, $200 a month may be a lot of money. Um, but I'm going to show you how no matter what your budget is, you can build a collection and have cards that you're proud of uh, that mean something to you. It just takes discipline. You have to be disciplined with your hobby dollars. That's the hardest thing for me is to not blow my budget buying some, you know, junk wax era boxes and just going ham and shredding into those things and then ended up with stacks of thousands of cards I've got to try to figure out what to do with. So that's a lot of what I collect. Um, you'll see PSA and SGC, or not PSA, but you'll see um, SGC submissions and reveals. Like I said, I'll buy PSA graded cards. I don't personally grade with PSA. I started grading with SGC and it's what I feel comfortable with. Um, and I, I enjoy their slabs. Um, there's a lot I like about P, uh, SGC. What you're probably not going to see on my channel is I don't consider, I'm not an influencer. I'm also not an expert. I don't consider myself an expert in <laughs> pretty much anything. Um, but what I do is I enjoy, I enjoy sports and I enjoy cards. You're not going to, I'm not going to be prospecting. You're not going to see me op busting open Bowman Chrome looking for the hottest rookie autograph. For those of you do, that do that type of thing, that's great. If that's what you enjoy, more power to you. Um, for me, that's not how, that's how I've decided not to spend my hobby dollars. So you're not going to hear top five hot lists on the latest and greatest rookies. You're not going to hear the top five cards going up over the last two or three weeks or week long process or whatever. And that's, that's just not how I collect. Now I, I watch some of those channels and think they put out some great content. Um, but that's not what this channel is going to be about. I'm going to try not to in, not to get involved with any of the drama in the hobby. Um, I'm a collector. I think to a certain extent, every role that someone plays in the hobby is vital to getting cards in the hand of collectors. Um, so I don't have a problem with flippers and investors and breakers. It's just not what I do. So with that said, I'm going to show you a lot of cards um, on this channel. I'm going to show you pickups. Um, you're probably going to see a lot of 1960 Tops cards because that's the set I'm building right now. I collect King Griffey Jr. I collect Ozzie Smith. Um, but I like pretty much any rookie Hall of Famer um, or any Hall of Fame rookie card. I like a lot of Hall of Famers. Um, like I said, some of the modern stuff, Justin Verlander, those guys that I think are going to get into the Hall of Fame. You know, I, I collect some of their rookie cards. Now, those years are a big hole in my collection. And the cards that I have now from that era um, are stuff that I've bought since I've been back into this. So um, I hope you enjoy my content. I'm happy to take you along on my journey. Uh, I'm, I'm happy and looking forward to helping expand my collecting network. So at, at this point, I rattled on long enough. I'm sure three quarters of you are asleep. So I'm going to show you a few cards and give you some background of what got me started on this 1960 top set. Thanks, and we'll be back with you in a minute. All right, everybody, I'm back for the second part of this video. So these three cards that you see on this stand right here, thanks to Chris from Missouri, by the way, uh, he made that stand for me in his shop. And if there's one single person out there that's responsible for me being on YouTube, it's Chris. So I thought about uh, for years starting a channel. Uh, Chris started his and him and I talked about it. And he gave me a few very s subtle, gentle nudges on why I need to start a YouTube channel. So we can blame all this on him. But these three cards uh, that you see in front of you right now are 
the three cards that are most responsible for me starting this 1960 top set journey. So as you can see to the left, there's Robin Roberts in a PSA 4. In the middle is Stan Musial in an SGC 3. And to the right is Willie Mays in an SGC 3.5. So these cards are most responsible for me starting the 1960 set because these are some of the first vintage cards that I bought a few years ago once I started thinking about switching to mostly vintage. So Robin Roberts I bought off of eBay. And I think at the time it was, and probably now too, it was a $15 or $20 card. I just... Thought it had good eye appeal for a four. It was cheap. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Now, the Stan Musial I bought off of eBay raw. And I didn't have a Stan Musial card. And so I was going through looking at a few different cards. And this one really jumped out to me. And I thought it was an amazing looking card. Um, I got it. Didn't find a thing wrong with it. I thought it was going to grade as a five or a six. I sent it into SGC and it came back a three and I did some further examination and I realized in one of the corners on the back there's a surface wrinkle. So that's why it graded a three but I still think it's an amazing card. Now on the right is the Willie Mays in a three and a half. So I bought this at a local card show raw a few years back and knew it wasn't going to be a high grade. Um, but I just thought it was a, a good looking card, sent it in to get graded and it came back as a three and a half. But if you noticed earlier, I said that I'm trying to build my 1960 top set in fives and sixes. Well, these clearly are not fives or sixes. Well, I bought these cards before I decided I was going to build the set. So as I was collecting, picking up my collecting of vintage, I was buying 1960 Topps cards just because I liked the way that they looked. And so I had these three and a few others um, before I even decided to build the set. Then once I got these and got some more and started thinking about it, I was like, you know what? You always end up gravitating toward these 1960 Topps set or Topps cards. Why don't you go ahead and build the whole set? So... Now I'm about 35 to 40% uh, complete through the set. Um, I have all three of the Mantle cards uh, from that set, which I'll show you in upcoming videos. I have an amazing Bob Gibson card um, that I bought ungraded from Chris from Missouri that I'll, I'll be showing you in an upcoming video. But these three cards here really sprung board, uh, were the springboard into me collecting this 1960 top set. And to me, it's just an amazing set. It's got great subsets with uh, team cards and the manager cards and the World Series cards. Um, you know, the Yastrzemski and McCovey rookie cards are in there. It's just, and, and recent Hall of Fame inductee, Jim Cott. So to me, it's just a, a great set that runs the gambit of kind of expensive high dollar cards all the way down to, you know, $20 Robin Roberts Hall of Famer cards. Um, but there are a lot of Hall of Famers in this set. I still need uh, Roberto Clemente, Yastrzemski, McCovey, uh, Hank Aaron, Koufax, Clemente. So, you know, some of these are two and three hundred dollar cards. So what I do is, you know, at my two hundred dollar budget, when it's time to buy the Yastrzemski, you know, I'll save up for a couple months and then go ahead and buy that card. Or for the mantle, I took it in advance on my baseball card budget and bought the, the mantle and then paid myself back. So this is, this is what got it all started for me. Again, thanks to Chris from Missouri and, and Mike Moynihan. Um, he's probably the channel I watch the most that most inspired me to get into vintage. Um, and I'm, I'm very grateful for those two guys, but there are many, many others out there. So again, hope you enjoy the channel. Hope you enjoy the cards. There'll be more to come. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one. And remember, baseball cards may not be the best thing you can spend your money on, but it's better than women and booze. Thanks.